All right, guys, I am at Gina's house on the deck. I'm doing a naked training kettlebell flow. So this is something that you would see in your programming. It's like, in a way, active recovery, doing some, some accessory work that's going to, you know, work on the little, little muscles that we don't think about when we're doing big lifts, um, squatting, benching. So, and it's for me a lot of good shoulder health, core, core health. Um, I am going to, I'll just tell you what we're doing first and then I'll explain each movement. So I'm gonna do a isometric kettlebell strict, um, single arm strict press. We're gonna hold for five seconds overhead, followed by five reps. I'm gonna do that just one time on each side. Then I'm gonna go into 10 goblet squats. I'm gonna do 10 plank pull throughs, but we're gonna be pulling the kettlebell from side to side using one arm at a time, staying in a nice tight plank position. Five Turkish get-ups each arm, and then 10 Cossack squats. So I'm really wanting to today focus on making sure I am warming up my overhead position, my shoulders before I do a Turkish get-up, and then also trying to open up my hips because my hip flexors have been really tight. And all of it, all you need is a kettlebell. You could also do this whole thing with a dumbbell. So if you're at home, you don't have kettlebells, but you do have dumbbells, that works just fine. This is the best, this is the way I like to hold the kettlebell. So it's resting on my shoulder. It's not behind me for the press. I can keep my elbow in a nice pressing position. I'm going to press and hold for five seconds, keeping maintaining a really tight body for five. And then we're going to go into five strict press. At the top of your position, I don't want you to think about pushing your head forward because now we're going to be straining our neck it's keeping our body neutral shoulder to ear so you're actively pushing the kettlebell up and keeping your your ear should be right by should be covered by your bicep bring it back down now switch to the other side goblet squats people will hold the kettlebell or dumbbell different ways you can hold it by the horn if it feels better to have it closer to your body and holding the bell right here, that's fine. <clears throat> Feet, hip width, sh shoulder width, somewhere in between, depends on your body. Um, working on keeping our weight in our three points of contact. So we want our big toe, pinky toe, heel all on the ground. Our weight should be moving into the middle of our foot. So if you're shifting forward in your toes, your heels are coming up, push your butt back. If you're, squat if you're squatting too low and you're coming into your toes or vice versa, lift up a little bit, come out of that like that depth that you're sitting in, maintain a really tight position, and just work in that range of motion. So, goblet squat. Make sure your knees are tracking your toes. Whew. Also, with things like this, like a kettlebell flow, it's not for time. So each rep should be a quality rep and kind of taking the time to really getting into like opening your hips, really focusing on strengthening everything you're working on versus trying to just race the clock. Kettlebell plank pull through. I am going to reach through and set the bell on the other side. When you start taking one hand off, it's a to stay balanced, make sure you find a good position, like width with your feet, um, constantly pushing into the floor, squeezing your whole body, nice tight position. And if you've never done it before, scale the weight. Start with something really light, even if it's a, maybe like a backpack you have, use that first to get the motion and pay attention to what your body is doing and what your body position is doing, and then you can start you know, challenging yourself with something a little bit heavier. We're gonna be doing just five of those each side. All right, the Turkish get up. I want you to do this if you've never done them before without weight first. I'm gonna demonstrate it without weight. And so I can really talk to you about where you should be looking the whole time. Um, it seems, I feel like a lot of people think it's so simple and it really is. It's so simple, but it's so easy to to mess it up. It's so easy to, to 
tweak something or let the weight drift away from your midline just the tiniest bit, and then it sucks because now you're tweaked. So you start laying on the ground. Same arm as leg is going to be up. So I'm going to be holding the weight with my left arm. Left knee is going to be up. First thing here is the bell or the, or the dumbbell should always be right above your shoulder. Okay, and as we start standing up, that weight, you don't want it to drift out in front of you and you don't want it to drift behind you. So it's very important to constantly be pushing the weight straight up and as we stand up, we're gonna finish in a very straight position. Weight over my, in my hand, over my shoulder, over my midline, knees, feet, etc. So, you're gonna push up, come up to your elbow. So it's a really big core portion of that right there. We're gonna come from here up to the hand, still pushing up. Open your hips. I'm gonna slide that knee, that leg back to my knee. And then from here, I'm just gonna come to a nice kneeling position. Okay, from here, my eyes are no longer looking at the kettlebell. I can look forward, come to standing. We're just gonna go back down the exact same way. So first, I'm gonna drop my knee. I'm going to reach for the ground and I'm going to look for the kettlebell. Okay, and you're gonna notice that as I reach for the ground, there's a slight opening of my armpit, movement of my shoulder. And what I'm doing is transitioning into a, so a better position so I can maintain the kettlebell position over my shoulder in a strong shoulder position. So I'm going, whoop. I'm going to reach, find the ground. From here, using this leg, hand come back to that open position, put the butt down, come to the elbow, and roll to your back. The Cossack squat. <laughs> show you without weight first so what initially what we're going to be doing in a nice wide position I'm going to be going from one side to the other this is really really going to open up your hips what I want you to make sure you're not doing is one lifting that heel coming to your toe or two letting that knee have a valgus knee, right? So my knees dropping in. You need to be in an active position, driving the knee, rotating the hip, keeping your knee, tracking your toes the whole time. So if you find yourself in a really bad position here, all you're gonna need to do is don't go this low. So I'm going to come up out of my squat, tight belly, make sure my hips, my heels down, my knees tracking my toe before I go to the other side. Um, more advanced would be maintaining sort of that squat position from one side to the other. I'm not quite warm yet, so I don't know if I can do it, but you'd basically go from here and we're going to move straight across. But starting out, you're just going to come up and back down, up and back down. Oh, and of course, when you're holding the weight, we're gonna hold it in that same goblet position, so right in our chest the whole time. All right, Colby, I'm breathing so hard. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pardon me in my tone. You can't step to my throne. They ain't working like me. I did this on my own. Asking where we been, I, I don't know where to begin. I, all this dirt on my skin, I just came here to win. I'm more than a man, I'm a monster. Somebody call a pastor, doctor. I got a six cents for imposters, so now I'm coming for the whole roster. It's not a game, why you playing with me? All right, I am going to stretch out a little bit. My hips been really tight, which is not 
it is it's normal like that's that's something that happens with me when I'm training a lot usually uh, I need to see a chiropractor because I'll get tight on this side and tight over here and it, my hips kind of get a little twisted I'll say and I haven't been adjusted and I haven't had time to get into the chiropractor so uh, a few stretches that I'll do trying to just open it up try and get my hips to almost relax into the like adjust themselves basically <laughs> There's a few things I like to do. So I'm just gonna foam roll uh, my glute and my hammy a little bit. So I don't just wanna open up this. Like if this is all tight, that's also what's causing a lot of the pain and impingement. So I'm gonna just do some foam rolling, figure four on the foam roller on my glutes. Um, I'm gonna get into a runner stretch, probably move through that a little bit. So I'm not just gonna static hold at first. I'm going to stand up, stretch back, slowly open my hip and then try and sink into a deeper runner stretch, elbows on the ground, grab the back foot, open it up. And then from there, I like to get into a frog, uh, frog stretch. So opening my hips this way. So on my belly, knees out. And then in that position, just sort of relaxing as much as possible. Um, those are things that work for me. Also, when I'm dealing with hips feeling a little bit out of place, just hanging on to the rig or you know, a pole or whatever, and sitting down into a deep squat position and letting my knee, I'll, actually, I'll do that first. I'll do that first. I'm gonna let my knee come in and then I'm going to push it out. So I'm gonna actively push it with my hand or my elbow um, and I'm gonna do some reps on both sides. So even though my right side is what's bothering me, I'm gonna make sure I still do the same thing on the other side. We'll start with that. All right, so I'm gonna do, you can do this without hanging on to anything, um, or you can hang on to something. So I'm just doing an air squat, kind of shifting through, trying to get my hips open. And then from here, I'm gonna do some internal, external rotation, one leg at a time. On the external, I'm gonna really focus on trying to pull with my glute, pull my knee out, and I'm gonna actually add some extra pressure with my hand, and I'm just going to basically one leg at a time, let that foot roll over, knee come in, make sure everything's still staying lifted so I don't wanna get into like this collapsed position. So. I'm gonna foam roll my glutes up into a figure four. You can put both hands behind you, one hand, and you really just you kind of got to move it around. And remember when you're foam rolling, you don't just go forward and back. You got to go side to side. You got to hit the muscle from all angles. All right. Since I want to work the front and back of this area, we're going to foam roll our, my quads too. Same idea. Notice I'm going back and forth. This hurts like a mother. <laughs> I'm going to start getting into a runner stretch. I like to start small and we're gonna just move through, uh, through the position a little bit at a time. So I'm not just jumping right into a static stretch. Also, you should be stretching and holding after you're already warm. That's the type of stretching you do when you're done training. If you're trying to warm up, you wanna do some stretches before you train, things should be more active. Your stretching should be more active. And if you're like me and you're tight, I just always start with a little bit of active and then we kind of get into something more painful. If you feel like your hips still feel like they're not open enough to get into that yet, for me, I'll just kind of get back into a squat. Make sure my hips feel good. Make sure I'm holding my body tight before getting into this. It's so good, but so painful. All right. Depending on what floor you're on, um, if you're doing it at home, if your knees, sometimes your knees will hurt on like a hard surface. So this mat is perfect. Um, sometimes your, the surface is a little sticky, so you don't feel like you can slide into that position. If you're at home, you can do like a um, pillows, you could do a dish rag, anything like that. And then at the gym, ab mats are really good because you also get a little bit of a deficit if you're someone who's really flexible.
right, guys. I'm done. I've changed in some regular clothes. This is also my new Wrangler crew neck. I bought, yes, I bought like a 2XL. No, sorry, like a 1XL. So it'd be really comfortable. Anyways, I know we've never done anything like that. I haven't done like coaching videos. Um, we've really stuck to like vlog stuff, but I really enjoyed doing that. So I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope that I have taught you any little thing that will help you in your own training um, in the gym or at home. Maybe even some of you that are coaches that just needed to expand your cues for your athletes. I hope that that helped. If you enjoyed it and you'd love to see some more coaching videos or even just more videos where I am explaining what I'm doing and teaching it as I go, um, let us know. Drop me a comment. Um, also comment things that you would very specifically love some help on and we'll see what we can do. For now, I'm done. Thank you for watching and I'm gonna go hang out with my best friend. Bye.